and welcome to this tutorial on the Man Whitney U statistical test. Uh, Man Whitney U test is another test we use in geography, um, and this one particularly looks at whether there is a difference uh, between two sets of data. Um, let's look at an example of um, earthquakes which occur um, at a plate margin in Japan and one in Italy. Um, so if you wanted to see if there was a difference in the size of earthquakes um, at the Japanese and the Italian plate margins, um, you could use this statistical test. Uh, so you would collect um, your data and then you would draw up your two hypotheses, um, a null hypothesis and an alternative one. Um, the null hypothesis uh, would be simply there is no significant difference between the sizes of earthquakes at the two plate margins. Um, and the alternative one, there is a significant difference between the sizes of earthquakes at the two plate margins. Um, how do we um, prove this? Well, what we need to do is get a Man Whitney U statist statistical test um, table. And here is one there. And uh, quite simply, we have um, two uh, columns for um, Italy and for Japan. And uh, we have listed here all the earthquakes within a time period in Italy. Um, these are the magnitudes of the earthquakes. And um, here we have the Japanese data on the right. Um, it's a ranking exercise because we're trying to find the rank of X which is the Italian one, and the rank of Y here. But unlike Spearman's rank, which you've probably come across before, we're going to rank these two sets of data together. And uh, in total, we've got 24 pieces of data. So I, on the right-hand side here, I'm going to write numbers 1 to 24 to help me remember which ranks I've already used. Otherwise, it can become... Uh, very confusing. So, we start off with the um, lowest rank, and we're going to give the lowest rank number 1. So we will see that the lowest number here is 4.5. And I'm going to give that a number one there. And I'm going to mark off that I've used rank number one. Um, 5.9 here is number two. And 6.1 here is number three. It looks like the Japanese ones might be slightly higher. So we're not over in that column yet. Uh, rank number four is here. And rank five there. And uh, we have now two earthquakes at 6.4. Now, because I've got two earthquakes at 6.4, I can't give one a rank 6 and one a rank 7. So again, we just find the average of this, which is 6.5. So we've used 6 and we've used 7. So our next rank uh, will be number 8, which is here. And then we were looking for rank um, 9, uh, which is actually over here. So we've ticked that one off. Now then, we have um, three pieces of data. Uh, uh, 6.8. There's one here. And one here. And a third one. Here it is. Uh, they're going to share uh, three ranks, 10, 11 and 12. So we find the average and the average is obviously 11. So we give those an 11. We've used those and we carry on um, as follows. Looking for rank number 13, which is 
a combination of four numbers. Um, so we're on to 6.9, which is here and here and here and here. So our rank is going to be shared between these four numbers. The average of these four numbers is 14.5. Can you see now why we have to write the ranks on the right hand side here to help us keep track of where we are? Uh, so we're now looking for rank number 17. Here we are, and 18 uh, again is a tied uh, rank for the um, 7.2. There we go, so we're going to give that 18.5. And now we're looking for rank 20, 21, and then rank 22, and 23, and 24. We then have to um, add up the sum of our column Rx and we're going to put it in here and this one comes to 94.5 and the sum of Ry, rank Y and this comes to 205.5. We're now going to substitute these numbers into our formula for Man Whitney U and Man Whitney U has uh, quite a complex looking um, formula. We need to find the value of ux and uy. So we're going to first find ux and ux is this horrible looking um, formula here um, and n is simply the, the number of um, pieces of data in our um, x column which is 12 and number of pieces of data in our y column, which is also 12. And at the end here, the sum of Rx, which is 94.5. So if we then substitute our data in, um, we minus 94.5, and follow through the calculation, 94.5, and if we do this one here, um, It simply comes out at uh, 127.5. We then have to do the same for UY. Now it's exactly the same formula here as the one above, but this time we are minusing the sum of rank Y. So it's essentially the same here. So 1, 4, and um, we plus the 78 just like before this time we're going to minus um, 16 sorry 202.5 which was our y column and this comes out to 16.5 so we have ui and we have ux hope you're keeping up now, these are two numbers for Man Whitney U. We need to take the lowest number, 16.5. And this is the number we're going to use to either accept or reject our null hypothesis. We need to look at a critical values table in order to accept or reject our null hypothesis and the Man Whitney U critical values table is very easy to read. Um, we look at the number of ranks along the top we had 12 and down the side here Y we also had 12 and where they meet 
is 37. Now, here's the thing. If our answer for Man Whitney U, which I'll remind you was 16.5, if it is lower than this number here, we can reject our null hypothesis. I'll say that again. Our answer for Man Whitney U, which was 16.5, it, it is lower than this number here. We can reject our null hypothesis. So let's have a look again at our null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis stated there is no difference, no significant difference between the sizes of earthquakes at the two plate margins. We can reject that, which means, happily, we can accept the alternative hypothesis that there is a significant difference between the sizes of earthquakes at the two plate margins.